Welcome to Just Break Up, the podcast about love, heartbreak, and all the relationship advice you don't want to hear. My name is Sierra DeMolder. And I'm Sam Blackwell. And today we're going to answer a letter from somebody whose friend's breakup is her own fault. But before we begin, we just want to give you our Surgeon General's warning, which is that Sierra and I are not licensed mental health practitioners. No, we are not professionals. We're not trained in any of this. So please take our advice as you see fit. We are only here to offer our humble musings to hopefully shed some understanding and maybe some laughs about the incredibly rewarding but mostly confusing experience that is love and friendship and breakups. All of it. All right. Today's letter is coming to us from Bad Friend, whose pronouns are she, her, who is writing to us from hell. (laughs) (laughs) Dear Sam, Sierra, and Spencer, thank you all for being vulnerable and open ears and hearts to all of your listeners. I've been a follower for years, and y'all continue to be an important part of my self-care ritual. That being said, I've been finding myself in a pickle. Mm. Trigger warnings for mentions of suicidal ideation. I'm having a tough time consoling one of my best friends over her breakup because dot, 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 it's kind of her fault. Becca, 29, and her boyfriend, Henry, 30, have been together for 12 years. They were high school sweethearts, and they were long distance for nine years. Military and college were factors. Well, when they were finally in a place to be together in the same city again, they moved in together. They actually bought a big-ass house together with marriage nowhere in sight, which is fine, and all but she wanted marriage and she committed to a mortgage before a ring girl that's when it started to get rocky (laughs) i don't really have any feelings about that but it's like okay i have lots of feelings about the rest of the letter but (laughs) whatever buy a house before a ring a ring is more important (laughs) i don't know yeah absolutely um i'm like i want a i want a roof over my head (laughs) 100 percent, absolutely (laughs) have you seen the renting (laughs) the rental market right now it's nuts (laughs) anyway uh She was so excited for both of them to be together finally, and her anxious attachment style became a prominent concern in their relationship. She would pick fights with him constantly. I saw it firsthand several times over stuff that would be non-issues if she didn't antagonize him. She would set him up to be the bad guy, but from a third-party perspective, he only got worked up when she wouldn't accept his response to any of their conversations. Henry is quiet and honestly a decent guy, and she's, uh, I describe her as an acquired taste. She's confident, headstrong, opinionated. She can talk and talk for hours, and she's a straight shooter, no bullshit kind of girl. One of the reasons I love her, but even I have had to set boundaries and stand up for myself when she makes belittling or out-of-pocket comments to me. So, when it comes to her boyfriend, there are no boundaries in her eyes. One time, while she was staying with me for a girl's weekend, she was on my balcony for f- at 4 a.m. arguing with Henry because he wasn't answering her calls earlier the day before context. He works in a field that requires a lot of travel and there's a time change. This went on for two hours, just her going in circles, trying to pry a response that seemed to deem just her going around in circles, trying to pry a response that seemed to be deemed acceptable to her at four in the morning anyway just trying to paint a picture of her personality i would try to ask her if she was happy in the relationship and she would always say i can't throw away 12 years down the drain they were stagnant and when they were physically together they fought well it happened they were having a blowout again she asked if they could talk and he said sure no problem And she kept asking, are you sure you want to talk? And he kept repeating, yes, I am talking to you right now. And she just kept asking, but do you want to talk? She shared to me that she wanted reassurance from him that he was interested in having a heart to heart, but he was just saying yes. She told me she wanted wanted to see more passion from him. It turned into a fight and she yelled, why are you even with me? And he said, I don't really know anymore. And he ended things. She spiraled, called me at one in the morning several times, left me voicemails that she wanted to die. I had to call her parents. She had an emergency therapy session, which she had been opposed to for therapy in the year for years in the past. And she said she just feels worse and can't accept their breakup. Note, she is no longer threatening suicide and is continuing therapy. She said Henry is cold and distant with her and he continues to say he needs space. She's really having a hard time giving him space because she needs resolution now. 
He expressed that she feels she is emotionally abusing him and he felt stuck in it for years. And to a certain extent, I agree. I should be a girl's girl no matter what, but I don't blame him for breaking up with her. And that makes me feel so shitty. Long story short, what do I say? She calls me regularly to try to calm her down. And to be honest, I'm doing a bad job at it. I'm not crude, but she also is not satisfied with my responses to her grief. I mostly just listen and tell her I'm here for her. Um, but I can tell she wants me to tell her that she, he's a piece of shit. And I just can't. Give me all the tough love I deserve. Sincerely, bad friend. Hmm. All right, bad friend. Um, I'm sorry that you're going through this. You know, I'm I'm sorry that your friend is experiencing this breakup. Um, I'm sorry that Henry is also experiencing this breakup. It sounds very tumultuous and like there's a lot of big feelings that are happening as a part of it. Um, and it sounds like you have been kind of making a lot of space for this particular friend over the course of your friendship, you know, um, whenever somebody tells me like somebody's an acquired taste, I'm like, okay, how are they treating you? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like, there's, there's definitely stuff that can happen there. I'm glad that I'm glad that she is in therapy. Um, and I hope that that is helpful for her. Um, but I'm sorry that you're being put in this position where you are having to comfort somebody who isn't accepting that comfort in the way that you can offer it. And who is also asking of you to deny what you think is true, right? Your own experiences of, of her behavior and what happened in this breakup. Um, so we're going to offer a little bit of support and validation for what you're experiencing. Um, maybe some, some additional boundaries that you can put up with this person uh, and maybe a little bit of empathy for how this person is behaving and, and why she's doing that. But before we do that, we are going to take a quick break. All right, my darlings, welcome back and a special welcome to Bad Friend. I don't think you're a bad friend at all. I think this is all within reasonable friendship, you know, to we're not meant to be in alignment with our friends all the time, especially when they might be acting out out of their own insecurity or pain or attachment style. Um, and also like, I know it's a phrase. I know you're just regurgitating a phrase, but to be a girl's girls doesn't really make sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. If you actually like think about it, because like, are we aligning our morals with genitalia or, or gender identity? You know yeah, what I mean? Right. For sure. <laughs> just making a joke around that. But like, <clears throat> but I'm putting that pressure that you're putting on yourself on a, in a different perspective of like, do you need to be a girl scarrel or do you need to be authentic to your friendships and the people that are in your life? Do you know what I mean? Okay. So that, that surface level thing out of the way. Um, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to muse a little <laughs> before I get to any actual practical advice. Um, sometimes if I have the time before recording um, with Sam, I will read the letters that we've chosen to my wife because I really like getting her perspective. And honestly, sometimes just reading them out loud and like talking about them with her um, helps me formulate my thoughts a little. And I also think because Willow and I, my wife and I are wired so differently, I, I really often appreciate the perspective that she brings. So when I have time, I do that. And I did that today with this letter. And let me tell you, it was humbling. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> It, is, it was humbling because um, when my wife heard this letter, she said, well, the friend, um, you know, the letter writer needs to know that, um, you know, she's doing the right thing. She's being authentic to herself and that her friend, Becca, is, quote, a bottomless pit. And there's nothing you could say that is going to make her feel better. Um and honestly, a little part, a little troll in me, like winced um, because I actually relate to Becca. I see myself in Becca and this spiraling, wanting, bottomless behavior. You know, it was like it was like kind of hard to hear my wife say that. And it sounds harsh, even though I know she was it's coming from like a a place of uh, love and empathy, I think. Um, uh because it's true, like when you are this deep in your anxious attachment style, 
and there's nothing grounding you to yourself and that you're you've built yourself on that external validation the ex, you know looking outward instead of inward um there is nothing anyone can say to make you feel better in a authentic sustainable way you know if the if the boyfriend had said baby i really want to talk to you right now I'm here, I'm invested, you need to believe me. And somehow that came through to her through all the the extra noise of her fear and her anxiety and her insecurity. That would only make her feel better in that moment is what I'm saying. And I think that's what Willow was trying to say too, of that like in, true sustainability has to be built on a sense of security within yourself, right? And that there, there's nothing... I mean, if you've witnessed it with your friend, there's nothing that her partner could have said to her to like break that spiral because she was being so incredibly hyper vigilant. She was looking for the exact response that would make her feel better, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't last long, you know? It would be a performance, you know, of enabling this anxious attachment style. And let me tell you, when my wife said that, like the little anxious attachment goblin inside me winced because I know. That without this podcast, <laughs> truthfully, without this podcast and, and without the hours and hours and h- hundreds and thousands of hours at this point that I have spent talking and learning from other people, talking about, l- talking to and learning from other people with anxious attachment styles and my own and looking, you know, reading books on it, I would have the capacity to do this. And it is, it is something that that folks that are wired similarly to me can do where we are so hyper vigilant that we're looking for, we're analyzing the posture in which um, our partner is facing us. We're analyzing the tones in which they say something, even though they answer it with the right words. Um, we're, we're waiting for that perfect thing to make us feel secure. And that's, that is literally hyper vigilance. It's, it's the idea that we feel constantly so destabilized, so unsafe within ourselves that we have to find that safety in other people. And I have empathy for your friend um, as I have empathy for myself. Um, And also I know that ultimately, unfortunately, I actually agree with Willow that there, that you're never going to be able to say it perfectly. Sam and I have tangible advice to give you a script and some ideas of like how to access more empathy for this friend and things to say. Um, But she's on a long journey right now. She's on a hard journey that I really hope disrupts this, that seeking of a particular response to give her a sense of security because it was, it was humbling to read this letter because I, I have been this hot mess Um, I have that the hot mess in me sees the hot mess in her sort of thing. Um, And I just know how scared and dysregulated and disrupted she must feel right now. And it's not pretty. It's not flattering. Absolutely. Like I said, it's it's humbling. Um, Yeah. And I guess I'm just sharing that to just I don't know share my perspective reading this letter. Um, but what she needs from you is she, she needs you to see her humanity and see her as a friend who is inherently flawed. She needs you to see her pain, which is a lot easier than, than um, agreeing with her pain. You just need to see it. You need to just, you just need to point it out and say, yes, I see that, you know, uh, you need to get on the level with her pain because she's your friend and she's a human that you care about. That sounds, you can say that sounds hard because you know that it is hard for her, not because you disagree with it or agree with it anyway. You can say, I can hear how much this is hurting you because you literally can. You can see how hard she's struggling, you know, Um, but your job right now is to see her pain, affirm it, um, acknowledge it and be that calm, loving presence that I told (laughs) Monday's letter that you have to be for your children. Um... And also, you can also, when she's ready, you can you can maybe ask her things like, you know, what is this discomfort telling you? You know, what do you, 
what is this discomfort telling you need you need to do if you can if there's ever an opportunity be like is your nerve you know what's your body feeling right now is your nervous system telling you to reach out again is your nervous system telling you something is wrong just because your nervous system is telling you something is wrong doesn't mean it is you know i don't know what do you think oh no. securely attached one <laughs> for sure i i think like i think that this letter is interesting to me because it kind of shows the way in which folks who maybe have more anxious attachment stay in relationships that they're unhappy in for a yes. long time <laughs> because real. they don't because they're convinced that this is the only person for them right like that this yeah. is the person that they have to convince it, to love you them. can't say no to love when you have an anxious attachment style 100%. it's too scarce in your mind absolutely Absolutely. And I, and I say that to offer a little bit of empathy for you to say like, you know, yes, she stayed in a relationship for much too long. That was like not working for her. And yes, she kept picking these fights with this person over and over and over again, right? Because she was so unhappy and didn't know other ways to alleviate that unhappiness. And like, is it frustrating to see from the outside? Yes. Is it toxic behavior? Absolutely. Right. Like verging perhaps on emotional abuse. Like I, I have a lot of empathy as well for Henry experiencing that too. Right. And I want to like, I want to frame this in a way that's like, this is the best that she could do with what she had available to her. Right. And, and kind of look at it as like developmentally, like this is understandable behavior. Right. Because and and I say that not to like excuse it, but I say that to offer empathy to it. Right. Like she was really hurting and trapped in that relationship. She was so deeply unhappy in that relationship and she saw no other way out of it than to continue to pick fights with this person. Right. Like how how terribly sad is it to know that for however long she was so unhappy and felt like she couldn't do anything about it because she felt trapped in it right i can't throw away 12 years that's not like a dismissive like thing that's like how sad is it to feel trapped in a relationship like that you know to feel like you have no recourse available to you except for to try and control this person into loving you in the way that is going to make you happy like it's the behavior is not excusable, right? Like it's, it's unacceptable, but there is a motivation behind it and understanding behind it that I think can offer us some empathy, right? Empathy and accountability at the same time. And I think as you are, as you're having these conversations with her, trying to help her through this, it's important to have both of those in your pocket in order to help support her because you not having empathy for what she went through isn't going to help. Right. And and this person's your friend. Right. I think it's important to recognize how hurt she was in that relationship, how unhappy and also how hurt she is by how it how it ended. And also some accountability. You don't have to lie to this person in order to somehow tell her that everything that she did was OK. Right. I think in this moment, it's OK for you to say, I'm sorry that this is happening. I can see how hurt you are by what's going on here. This is so difficult. I totally understand that. I know how unhappy you were in that relationship and it didn't feel like you had any other way out of it. Right. And how devastated you are now that this is happening. And to say, maybe not in this particular moment when she's like very freshly post breakup, you know what I mean? Like, wait a little bit. Just to, to like have these other conversations. But I think that it's important for you to also say, hey, friend, you know, I've experienced some of the ways that you have forced me to tend to you in ways that don't feel like reciprocal, right? Like that feel that that are really harmful. I'm curious about like how that feels in your body when those types of things are happening. Like what's what's driving you to to say those types of things to me when you make that out of pocket comment or you right like or you say that thing that is really dismissive of me, right? Or hey, I noticed at the end of that relationship when I would ask you you were happy, you would say I can't throw 12 years away. Like I'm curious why you felt like you couldn't find a way out of the relationship in a way that would work for you. Like, what is it about that relationship that felt like you couldn't end it or you couldn't figure it out? You know, like, I think that there's an important thing here to to practice some curiosity, but to bring up these real things. Like, you don't have to lie and say, like, oh, my God, he's such an asshole. Right. You can say something like, 
oh my God, this hurts. I can totally tell that this hurts. It sounds like he really wanted to be out of the relationship. It sounds like he was also unhappy, right? Like, sounds like he didn't want to be with you, which is what <clears throat> you said to me. And I was like, yes. fuck you, but I needed to hear it. <laughs> but you needed to hear it, right? Like, and, and I think you can even say to her, if she's like, oh my God, you won't talk to me, you won't talk to me. I would say to her as this, as a friend, I would say, it's not his job to talk to you, right? He, you, you do, you do aren't entitled to him talking to you. He's off doing his own thing, figuring out what he needs to do next. It's up to us as your friends and for you to figure out how you need to move up next. Right. Like yeah. that kind of tough love, I think sometimes backfires, but like, I think you owe it to yourself to say some of this shit and you saying some of the shit doesn't make you not a girl's girl, right? It just makes yeah. you a good friend who's going to not only practice empathy, God, this is so hard, but also accountability. You need to stop talking to him, right? Like this person doesn't owe you anything anymore. Yeah. This person doesn't want to be yeah. with you anymore. Say right? something like, like nothing he can say will make this hurt go away right now. Absolutely. That's what she right? needs to hear. Yes. Oh my God. Say that. Right. Like nothing he could say in the relationship was, uh, was working for you. Nothing he's going to say after this relationship is working for you. Right. Like I, I, I think you can be honest. You don't have to say like, oh my God, girl, this was your fault. <laughs> like I don't like that. Maybe that level of honesty isn't necessary, but I do think that you deserve for yourself to say some of these things that are true, that are, that are grounded in what you know to be true of their relationship. And, and, if she can't accept that, if she can't hear that, right? Like, again, that's more information that you know about how she is going to handle not only this breakup, but your friendship going forward, right? Like, I don't want you to feel the same way that Henry did in your relationship with her, which is that, like, I have to say the right thing. If I don't say the right thing, I get I get yelled at, right? Like, to, to like, like Willow said, right? To keep pouring energy into an endless pit that has no bottom to it. And I'm, I'm so glad that she's in therapy and I, and I really hope that she commits to it and that those therapeutic practices help her build a bottom to that well, right? To like bring it closer to the surface so that, you know, when people pour water in it, like the water fills it up. <laughs> like that's, I hope that that is something that she's working on. But in this moment, right? Like, it's not your job to just say whatever she wants to hear. And in fact, that same behavior is what ended the relationship, right? Like her expectation that everyone treat her perfectly, say the exact right thing to get her to feel better is what, what caused her to push away this person who apparently is a very wonderful man. And again, like not trying to like villainize her, yeah. empathize with her, right? Like this is the best that she can do. And sometimes when people are giving us their best and it's not working for us, we have to say something about it. We have to push back. We have to say, if this is your best, that's great. And I understand and I empathize why this is happening, but also... I need to take the space to to not be subject to your best, which is actually hurting me or is actually causing me yeah. harm. Yeah, I agree. It's like there, Dr. Lipsy, Lindsay Gibson should write a book that's like emotionally immature friends <laughs> so that we can all like read that and be like, OK, how do I yeah. change my expectations and also set boundaries for myself when it comes to friends who are who are not doing the work to help support themselves in ways that are yeah. sustainable for them or their yeah. friendships? And a huge part about her healing is going to be realizing that her anxious attachment style doesn't make her broken or or too needy. It's that she has a personal responsibility to her own needs and her own nervous system and, and her triggers and that the right partner out there will be able to support her through those anxious attachment spirals. Do you know what I mean? Truthfully, something I would do if this was my friend in conversation is that I would say like, Hey, I thought of you the other day because I was listening to a podcast about my attachment style, which is blank. And I found it really empowering to learn how I related to other people and how like my own understandings of security played into it, yada, yada. And I would, I, I would paint it as my thing. Like this really helped me understand myself better. Maybe you would find, maybe you would like this. And then you send her a couple of resources that you found like our podcast or our, well, don't send her our podcast. Yeah, don't <laughs> send her this that. episode, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, there's so many things out there on anxious attachment styles that has really helped me, um, you know, so check that out um, and, and do it in a way that's like, this helped me through my shit. My shit sees your shit sort of thing, you know? Sure. Absolutely. Well, and also I like, I will say too that like, you know, 
from what I've experienced of your relationship with Willow is that Willow helps you through those anxious attachment stuff, but she doesn't take it on as her job, right? Like she'll say to no. you things like, I'm not responsible for your feelings. And that feelings. was startling to me. That was so <laughs> right? startling to me. I was like, what, are you, what the fuck are you talking about? We are sleeping together. You are for sure responsible for my mental well-being. <laughs> right? But like that was helpful and now for I get you. It. Now when she says yeah, that, I right. say, oh, my feelings are my responsibility, but they're also mine. You know, right. mm-hmm. she'll, she, in, in addition to saying I'm not responsible for your feelings, she'll say, I'll say my feelings and I'll say, but you, you said this and you felt this. And she said, she'll say, you're, you're allowed to feel those feelings. Your feelings are yours and v- real and valid. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So it's not, she has this w- weirdly secure understanding <laughs> of, <laughs> of relationships. I'm so lucky. Um, anyway. Right. But I think that, uh, that that illustrates that it's important not just to like tend constantly to an anxious attachment per styles person's yeah. <laughs> like constant yeah. anxiety spirals, but to also say like, friend, this be, is yours there, to there's manage. There's a firm love. Yep. There's a there's a way that you can lovingly and firmly support somebody with an anxious attachment style. Um, and I think you can find the balance in that. But you have to find the humanity first. If, if you want to maintain a friendship with this person, if this person is, which it sounds like you do, you know what I mean? Ultimately, in this round of healing, it doesn't matter whose, quote, fault it is. She still deserves empathy and support. You don't have to lie. You don't have to say it's his fault. He's an asshole. But you can get on the level with her pain and just say that you see it and that you see how it's affecting her. And that here are the tools that you've used when you felt this way and try to point her in the direction of that growth and hold her accountable to it when you when you know you can like absolutely he, stop contacting him he, he's not the person to talk to right now yep absolutely There's nothing he could say that would make you feel better right now that would take this pain away and i think that 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 sort of level of empathy combined with honesty and accountability is actually what makes us good friends right is actually what makes us supportive of the people in our lives and and i have a lot of faith that you're going to be able to figure that out um and i'm hopeful that this breakup the therapy that your friend is going through and and your honesty with her is something that sort of helps her find ways to process through and manage her own attachment in ways that are more sustainable not just for her relationships, but also for herself too, because she deserves that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, my darling, we love you so much and we hope this helps. Absolutely. Thanks for listening. Nope. Thank you so much for writing. We love you. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. If you would like more content from us or if you would like access to our monthly office hours, you can support us on Patreon. If you support us on Patreon for as little as $5 a month, you'll get an additional bonus weekly episode as well as access to our office hours, which is when Sierra and I hop on Zoom and chat with anyone who wants to join us. We uh, usually offer a check-in and then we just answer people's questions as they come up so you can get responses in real time. It's super fun, super fulfilling and engaging and everyone in it is so cute and adorable and supportive of each other and I love them so much so please consider joining us our our next one is going to be on uh Sunday uh, uh Sunday November 24th uh it's going to be fra- at 1 p.m eastern 12 p.m central so please join us that's patreon.com slash just break up pod You can slide into our DMs, send us your favorite relationship memes, but most importantly, you can submit your questions about all matters of the heart at justbreakuppod.com, which is also where you can find our merchandise. Please remember to like, follow, subscribe, give us a five-star rating and review. This literally keeps our mics on and helps us reach more brokenhearted souls who need two random strangers giving them relationship advice. Just Break Up is a production of Duvid Media, original music, recording, editing, producing all magical things by our good friend Spencer Worth Davis. Make sure to check out his podcasts and his music. And remember, you don't have to agree with someone to see that they're struggling to honor the humanity in them that is hurting. And you also don't have to enable every single way in which they are enacting harm on themselves and others. There is a balance to be struck. There is a sweet spot somewhere in there where you can say, I see your pain. I see how hard this is. I see how you're hurting. I also see these ways in which I can hopefully support you in your growth. And if all else fails, just break up.